News Talk 95.1, 7.90 a.m. This is KFYO. Mornings, Dave King, Matt Martin, and as always, it is Thursday morning and uh, 7.36, and that means only one thing. It's time for Jerry Reynolds, the car pro. Good morning, Jerry. Well, good morning, guys. How are y'all? We're good. We got Paul Bean covering for Matt this morning. Yes, I heard. Hello, Paul. Good morning, <laughs> Jerry. How you doing? Buddy, I'm doing good. What kind of wheels uh, you have you got under you this week? Well, I tell you what, it's been a pretty enjoyable week. Uh, I've had the all new 2019 Toyota Avalon. This is their flagship sedan, right? And it's you know it's been a little bit of a oh uh, I'd stop short of boring in the past, but it's it, and it's always been a great car. There just wasn't a whole lot exciting about it in the looks department in performance or anything else and they've made some really nice upgrades for this new 2019 uh especially on the interior side uh this this car's got some of the prettiest seats and door panels of any car i've been in in a while and you you think okay what could be what could be great about a door panel and you're just gonna have to look at the pictures when i get the review up first part of next week but it's just really unusual the way they did the materials uh, car drives good, gets well over 30 miles to the gallon out on the highway, which for a car this size is very good. Huge trunk, huge back seat, lots of headroom. A very, very comfortable car. Now, when I when I filmed with the car uh, yesterday and did my audio, audio and video review, I said, okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the grill. There's going to be people who are going to look at this grill because it's got that new face of Toyota and Lexus. Huge spindle grill in the front. I mean, it, it goes all the way across the car. Uh, I liken it somewhat to a catfish. but Looks like know, an Edsel. <laughs> or something like that, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's going to turn some people off. There's no doubt about it. Right. But, you know, I, I think that if you get behind the wheel of the car, and drive it where you can't see that grill, uh, people are going to enjoy this car. You know, Jerry, in a lot of instances, especially depending upon where you live, but down along the I-35 corridor, braking and acceleration are critical, uh, especially in this bumper-to-bumper high-speed driving that sometimes you get caught up in, and it's nothing that you've done wrong. You just happen to be in a whirlwind and can't get out of it. Yeah. Uh, how does uh, how does it corner? Of, uh, you know, uh, how do you like the handling of the vehicle? You know, when it's in Toyota's kind of, and so is Lexus, gotten big into different drive modes, which they needed to do. And the reason for that is some people like a firmer ride. Some people like a softer ride and used to only could get a soft ride in a Toyota and a Lexus. Now they've got uh, eco mode, so if you're really going after gas mileage, it's got a normal mode, and then it's got a sport mode. So when you put it in sport mode, it does well as far as acceleration, handling. It changes the steering. It changes the dampers. It changes the way the transmission shifts. Uh, so I've been most of the week in sport mode and find it very enjoyable, and it would do well in the conditions you're talking about. Does it burn more gas, take more gas in sport mode? Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly. <laughs> Everything, everything's got a prize. Uh, what about the uh, automatic braking? Uh, is that available in this uh, particular vehicle? It is, uh, and, and you've got to be careful with that. In fact, I've got an article on my website on this. You know, automatic braking to different manufacturers means different things. For most of them, it is sort of a mitigation, meaning that it will not stop you, but it will slow you down. Uh, so you have a lesser wreck than you would have. Uh, there's a few cars in there, the upper line cars, that will bring you to a complete halt in an emergency situation. This car will not. It will slow you down if it senses an accident is imminent. But it will not stop the car. It will slow it down. Any airbag issue in in the new Toyota? No, no not at all. I think uh, most of the airbag issues that we're seeing today are going back some years. Uh, most of the new airbags that's coming out, I think they've got those pretty well ironed out. But there's still 35 million cars on the road that 
need airbags that haven't had the recall completed yet, which is a staggering number. Uh, right, which uh, will never be completed. Uh, I mean, uh, th- those cars will go to the crusher with a bad airbag in it. Uh, or more a lot than of them will. Yeah, right. More, more than likely. Uh, another really important question, especially this time of year, how's the air conditioner work? Really well. <laughs> Good. This, car, uh, this car's got a great air conditioning. It's got great air conditioned seats in the front. And I get in the, being in 100 cars a year or so, some air conditioned seats work better than others. Some uh, are slow to get cool, especially the kind of heat that we've had. Uh, some do it instantly. Some you can actually hear the fan motors in the seats uh, running, blowing air through there, which is a little bit annoying to me. But this this car's got really good air conditioner and a really good, good power, uh, cool seats. I, I love that. Uh, and and you, I've needed it this week. Uh, let's uh, briefly, uh, can you talk about the the manufactured suggested retail price of these vehicles? Uh, sure. Uh, how do they how do they compare with others in in that particular line? The comparable cars are what the the Hyundai and and some of some of the foreign lines like that. Uh, if yeah. price wise. Right. Primarily, you know, this car falls into the full size category. It's got a MSRP of forty three nine, um, and Honda really doesn't have a competitor in this full size segment. The Accord uh, would would you know would line up with the Camry, uh, but this car, Chevy Impala, is a competitor. This car, the Ford Taurus, uh, some of the some of the uh, Hyundai Kia entries are there certainly. Um, Nissan Maxima is a competitor to this car. And, and so they're all in that same price range. Now, the domestics, when you're talking about the Taurus and the Impala, both of those uh, are going to be less money primarily because of incentives. The domestics are big into rebates, whereas, you know, Toyota and Honda and some of the Japanese-based cars are not. Uh, I, so, I, don't, I don't want to turn this into a, a financial show, but... Uh, uh, you, I, I'm sure you have a lot of interaction with car dealers on a daily, if not hourly, basis. Uh, yes. Are they uh, are they concerned about this tariff issue? Yeah, they're they're concerned about it, uh, obviously, but they also are optimistic that it'll get worked out. Uh, we saw this years ago, and some cars overnight took a two two to three thousand dollar increase. And I think what scares the dealers and the manufacturers is that. So many times with situations like tariffs, prices go up. You think it's going to be temporary, but they never come back down. And and that's that's the scary part. So that's something we're really going to have to watch uh, as the president continues to negotiate these deals. Uh, you know, he's a deal maker, so we got to hope that he can make a good deal for everybody involved, including the auto industry. And he is very aware of what the auto industry, how important that is in the United States. Well, so many of the, uh, quote, foreign cars are now built here in the United States. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Some, some, many of them, as a matter of fact. Uh, you could say, you could go so far as to say most. Uh, it, uh, there's not that many cars imported anymore. Uh, and we've got a lot of cars going out. You know, the number one selling vehicle in China is Buick. It, it, which uh, never would I thought I had, would have seen that in my lifetime, but I, you know that's that's the reality of that's it. That's hard global, to believe. What, what is it about industry? the Buick that the Chinese I love? Don't know. They just love the big car. You <laughs> know, uh, uh, Jerry, and on that on that Buick point, I was watching a television commercial uh, last night. Buick is still trying to and and are turning out seven different models, and, and that's got to be a strain on the manufacturing side. I'd think. Yeah, it is, it, especially when, you know, everybody's making this transition to SUVs, and Buick was a little bit behind. They're trying to catch up now, and they've done a pretty good job. In fact, one of my other reviewers this week has got the new Buick Envision, which is their midsize SUV, and, and we'll have a review up on it next week. Uh, but they're trying to. The, the good thing with GM is that, they can build different brands all inside one plant. In other words, the Arlington plant here in Dallas-Fort Worth 
they're building Tahoes, Suburbans, Yukons, Escalades, you know, cars from three different brands all under one roof. And and so they've gotten very good at adapting. Right. Many uh, of those stampings are the same, aren't they? As yes. For oh, yeah. Fenders Absolutely. Or, right, yeah. Just one quick thing sure. I wanted to comment on. I broke the news. In fact, I was on the air with you guys last Saturday in the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, we learned that uh, Sergio Marchione, the CEO of Chrysler, was suddenly being replaced due to a health issue. And, and boy, it has rocked the automotive world this week. He, he passed away yesterday. Uh, very suddenly at the age of 66, he had a shoulder operation and something went wrong uh, last Friday. And then Saturday we found out that he would never be able to return to work, and they, they named his replacement on Saturday. But just just been a rough week as far as, as that goes because none of us saw that coming. Wow. That's, uh, what a wild ride Chrysler has had through the past 40 years or so, through Iacocca and the government loan from Reagan and yep. paying it back and, uh, and and some of the failures they've had and some of the amazing successes they've had as far as – Well, this guy – this guy rescued him out of out of the bankruptcy. Yeah. Jerry, we've got to run. Our, our time is up on the clock. We do want to remind everyone that you're on the air live every Saturday, 11 to 1, here right here on KFYO. And so you uh, check out your website. Tell us, tell us what your website is. It's carprousa.com. Jerry, Thanks, thank you guys. so much, bud. Okay, uh, 747, quick break, and we'll be back with more.